How's it going everyone? In today's video series, we're going to learn about one of Rust's most powerful features, declarative macros. Now, macros in Rust are a way to write code that writes other code, which is known as metaprogramming. This might sound complicated, but once you understand the basics, macros become an incredibly useful tool in your Rust toolkit. The confusing part isn't really understanding what macros do. They generate code at compile time. The confusing part is understanding the syntax and when to use macros versus regular functions, especially if you're coming from languages like Python or JavaScript, where you might not have encountered macros before. In this series, I'm going to show you how declarative macros work step by step. We'll start with the basics and build up to more complex examples. My recommendation is that you follow along and try modifying the examples yourself. That's the best way to really understand how macros work. Before we dive into the syntax, let's talk about what macros actually are. A macro is a way to define reusable code patterns. When you call a macro, it expands into code at compile time, before your program actually runs. This is different from functions in a few important ways. Functions are called at runtime. Macros are expanded at compile time. Macros can take a variable number of arguments. Macros can generate code that functions can't. And you've actually been using macros this whole time without realizing it. Printline is a macro, and so is vector. And even format, which is a macro that creates a formatted string. The exclamation mark is how you distinguish macros from functions. When you see printline or vec, you know you're calling a macro, not a function. This is important because macros can do things that functions can't like take a variable number of arguments. So why would you want to use macros instead of regular functions? There are several good reasons. The first one being code generation. Macros can generate repetitive code for you. Second, variable arguments. Macros can take different numbers of arguments. Third, compile time checks. Macros can perform checks at compile time. And finally, domain specific languages. Macros can create mini languages for specific tasks. Personally, I like to think of macros as a way to reduce boilerplate and make code more expressive. But you should use them judiciously. Not everything needs to be a macro. Let's look at a simple example of what macros can do that functions can't. Here's a function that can only take a fixed number of arguments. And we will call it add3. But what if we want to add a variable number of numbers? With a function, we'd need to use a slice or a vector. But with a macro, we can create something that looks more natural. So what we're going to learn how to create is this macro over here. As you can see, it looks far more natural. You just add the numbers to the add macro and it gives you the sum. We don't have to pass in a vector or anything. But once again, we're going to learn how to do this in the next episode. So for now, just look at how clean this syntax is, even if we can't run this example. Moving on, I just want to quickly mention that Rust has three types of macros, starting with declarative macros. And this is the one that we're learning about in this series. And these are written using a macro rules macro. They are pattern matching based and they are the most common and easiest to understand. Then we have procedural macros. They are more advanced and written as Rust code, although we won't be covering these in this series. And finally, we have built-in macros, which are provided by the standard library. For example, we have printline or print. All of these are built-in macros. In this series, we're focusing on declarative macros because they're the most accessible and cover most use cases. But now let's take a look at how macros work. When you write a macro, you're essentially writing a pattern matcher. The macro system looks at the code you pass to the macro, matches it against patterns you've defined and then generates code based on those patterns. This all happens at compile time, so there's no runtime overhead. The macro expands into regular Rust code, which then gets compiled normally. Let's take a look at a very simple example to get a feel for how this works. We'll create a macro that just returns the number 42. This macro is called answer, and it takes no arguments, as you can tell by the empty parentheses. When you call it, it expands to the number 42. But now let's try using it. So here we're going to create an answer called the answer, and that's going to call the answer macro. Then with that, 
Does that have to be written above? Is that the first time I have to write something above? Interesting. And now when we run this, what we should get as an output is that the answer is 42. When the compiler sees answer, it matches it against our pattern, which is the empty parentheses, and replaces it with 42. So answer becomes just 42 in the compiled code. And this is a trivial example, but it shows the basic idea. Macros match patterns and generate code. In the next episode, we'll learn how to write more useful macros with actual patterns.